So today I wanted to talk about getting overwhelmed from Kundalini. So a lot of times people don't understand how much their empathy increases energetic wise when Kundalini happens. So you may go out into public places and notice yourself feeling really stressed out, maybe even angry, fearful, you know, certain things that don't make sense to the situation. And a lot of times we attribute that to, oh, I'm anxious in public or, you know, that must be my Kundalini bringing something up from my childhood trauma. But nine times out of 10, I'd say 99 times out of 100, if you don't feel something and then you walk into an environment and you feel it, it's not yours. So I got energetically overwhelmed when I was in the museum. So I had to go outside and just like stand on the grass and ground for a bit. Yeah. I just love stuff that looks like a castle. like a place where you plot world domination is like the there's like the command center <laughs> hello Roger Roger falling mangoes and then a mango fell right when I heard that and I grabbed it and I ate it and it's really good it's like a really creamy mango it's so good oh my gosh if you don't feel something and then you walk into an environment and you feel it, it's not yours. Sometimes it is yours because other people's light is triggering your darkness. That is true. But tune in with yourself and you'll, you'll start to be able to discern what's going on. You'll start to be able to discern the difference between what's yours and what's other people's. Because as Kundalini rises, it can be really difficult to tell because it feels almost like it's yours. You know, it's like hyper empathy. It's as if you are experiencing that emotion as if it happened to you. And sometimes the weirdest part about Kundalini is it's active on that really subconscious layer. So you might pick up stuff from people's deep subconscious and start feeling it. And they're on the surface giggling and smiling and living their life. And you're sitting there experiencing the frequency of their childhood trauma, you know, and that can happen. Um, it happens when we're especially ungrounded though. 
you know. But during the Kundalini Awakening, you can't stay grounded all the time. Like, I wasn't able to. Maybe you can. I don't want to put any limits on you. But in when Kundalini is very active, it's very important to try to ground yourself. But it's also very difficult. Because that energy is emerging from the root chakra and it's flying, you know. So there's nothing stable going on in that area. So it's hard to be grounded at all in general. So, you know, go easy on yourself. And here's a trick that I like to do is if I'm feeling overwhelmed in an environment, I give myself a 10 minute break. I don't time it, but I give myself five or 10 minutes to exit the situation, to leave all the people I'm around That's important because you don't know, you know, what's what until you get some space and separation. Rotate the planet. And like that's like the Kundalini energy. a heat sensor right so get some space and separation get into a different environment preferably like nature if you can get out into nature that's really really good and um you know take a couple breaths don't think about anything and just try to relax and after a couple minutes of just breathing and relaxing you can hold your hand to your chest and say what is mine that i'm feeling and hold that question in the heart. And what happens as you hold that in the heart is you'll start to be able to see what's yours. And as you see what's yours, you'll see what's not yours. And as you see what's not yours, it will no longer feel like it's yours. And it often will leave your field. If not, it'll just create some space and separation between what you're experiencing. You know, this journey doesn't have to be so hard. Kundalini is very hard when you try to treat yourself like you're a normal, neurotypical person. It doesn't have an intense creation, life force energy pumping through every cell in their body. You know? It helps to know that there are different ways of living that are more suitable to someone that's had a Kundalini awakening rather than the collective programming of trying to get things done, trying to move places, trying to say things, you know, on that layer. A lot of, in, at least for me, and we'll get into it in another video, actually, that's a great topic for another video. You know, in the, in the video that I was showing at the Bishop Museum, I got really overwhelmed. There was a lot of energy there, a lot of different people there. And I gave myself space and I went outside and walked around and found a mango tree, you know, getting some fruit, getting some sun, getting, getting the dogs out, you know, <laughs> getting your feet on the grass is what that means. Letting your dogs, taking your dogs for a walk getting some good grounding, you know? And if you're experiencing any Kundalini awakening symptoms, or if you're still trying to integrate from an intense spiritual awakening and you want to learn more about, you know, getting some one-on-one -on -one or group coaching around that, you can go to the link in my bio and you can set up a free call with me personally and we can just talk about it. You know, I need to learn more about your situation before I knew if coaching would be a good option for you. It's not for everybody. I will see you guys next week.